Diego Rivera. He is one of the most famous Mexican painters who rebels against the traditional school of painting and develop new style which combine historical, social, and political ideas. The changes and the circumstance in the turbulent period like the earlier century were painted in his work of art. Rivera was born in 1886 in small town of Guanajuato in Mexico. Then he and his family moved to Mexico City in the early 1890s. His parents were school teacher and support their son's artistic talent and enroll him to San Carlos Academy of Fine Arts, which is the National Art School of Mexico, after he finished high school. Rivera studied work by Mexican painter, learned about Mexican folk art, and even traveled to see Mexico, ancient Maya and Aztec culture. Undeniably, they made him fully absorbed in country tradition and respect them so much. Then it came to the new century, in 1910 to 1920, it was the period of Mexican Revolution and the First World War. Rivera was awarded and granted to the money to Europe. He was inspired by Spanish art such as war fresco from the Renaissance period and the Modernism. He met Picasso and saw the development of Cubism and he absorbed his lesson. His famous Cubism the nature modern Espanol in 1915. The technique he used is the variety of color to make painting more visually interesting and the composition of the cubists are separated by the bright colors, as well as the texture. In some areas were applied by thick paint or little dabs. In nature more Espanol, Rivera paint thickly at the mouth of the jug to imitate the real clay and make it seem like water could be poured through the opening. This picture was his early experiment of cubism. The components such as flower, fruit, book, music instrument, bottle, bowl, are arranged carefully in still life painting. Moreover, they are able to trick your eyes to think that they are real. My cubist painting are my most Mexican, said Diego Rivera. Then, when he was mature, he returned to Mexico and combined the painting technique he had learned from the West with his passion of his homeland, Mexico. His work focused on everyday life of ordinary Mexican worker, farmer, or even children. In 1920-1930s, Rivera became famous as a mural painter that he painted on public buildings. He embraced the idea that art should be seen and enjoyed by everyone, regardless of the classes. Rivera's style of murals are a powerful story about the struggle of the poor. He also included the history and diverse people of Mexico. After he died in 1957, he was honored for creating modern Mexican art and celebrating Mexican culture. Muro is the fresco that painted on the wall with red plaster. The thing that makes them special is that they cannot be moved or sold in private home unlike the oil canvas. So the purpose of painting was mainly for the people. Shortly after the Mexican Revolution, it came an idea of establishing new Republic of Mexico that would distance it from its dictatorial and colonial past. The first mural he painted, named Creation, painted on 1922 to 1923. He used encaustic technique, which is the technique of using color pigment and apply on the hot wax, which is common in Greek Roman painting. It is a composition of mythology and religious motif. At the top symbol is represent divine trinity with blessing hand. On the bottom is Adam and Eve. And over them on the both sides is nine muses, and on the next level is Christian virtue. The left represents love, hope, and faith, and the right represents prudence, justice, and strength. And in the sky is wisdom and science. The Italian and Byzantine art can be seen in his work through the gold leaf and the monument. Even though this picture was widely popular, Rivera felt like this painting was too 
Italian and he didn't like it. And during the painting of Muro, Rivella felt compelled to carry a pistol with him at all times to protect himself from the right-wing students. Next mural, the Detroit industry fresco style that painted in 1932-1933. This series of murals gave him a big deal of fame. It made him famous. It started when William Valentina, who was the art director, and Estelle Ford, who was president of Ford Motor Director, invited Mexican artist Rivera to beautify the museum and give fame to their hall in 1931. The hall is enormous. He spent 11 months on it. Four walls were painted to both celebrate and question the place of industry in society in his own interpretation, such as its promise and its product, its danger and its damage. The process of car production was included in his painting. Rivera portrayed the worker who worked with steel and built powerful engine and constructing car body. There was an assembly line of di diverse multiracial workforce. He depicted the motorized line, the machinery, and the synchronized worker throughout the murals. Of this is because he intended to show how enormous and complex the process was and every inch of his painting is technically correct compared to the real process. And he also included the crowd who watched the workers. On the other hand, he also portrayed the contrast, the wonder and the danger of science, the threat of chemical weapon, the construction of ship and plane. He even painted the harvesting of the rubber that provide the material for the rubbers. Edsel and William Valentino were placed in the lower light corner of the South War, and his own team of painters were portrayed as a worker in the assembly line. The next two similar painting is Man at the Crossroad in New York City, 1933, and Man the Controller of the Universe in 1934. The first painting was commissioned by John D. Rockefeller Jr. for 30 Rock of Rockefeller Center. Simultaneously, Rivella was in New York City. He received a one-man exhibition of the Museum of Modern Art, in which one of the founders was Rockefeller's wife. The first painting was called Man at the Crossroad in New York City, 1933. Unfortunately, this mural did not survive because Rivella included the image of communist figures such as Lenin and Rockefeller did not want to see them in his place. Because he was the cap capitalist and strongly opposed to communism, Rockefeller even asked Rivella to remove them, but he refused to do so, so the war was destroyed. Second opportunity came to him in Mexico City. The painting was redone and named Man the Controller of the Universe and painted in 1934. We have an enormous figure in the center who seems like he is operating the giant machine. But to look in the bigger aspect, it is like he is controlling the universe. However, it is also a cross. The composition divided into two parts represent the way the future will go as a matter of fact that in 1930s was a turbulent period such as the rise of fascists in Europe. Rivera illustrated the depression around the world, unemployment and deprivation, people were starving, the question has been raised by the people that capitalism should be replaced by the system that was more fair and not communist and not benefit the elite. However, there was a progress in society appear on this picture in the left corner. The different ethnicity come together and being educated. To focus on the man in the center, on his left side, in the ellipse, is it the universe? and on the other side is the microorganism and bacteria. On the frame of both sides, there are two huge lens. All of these components, they imply the man ability that we are able to look at the great reach of space or even the smallest life-like microorganism. All of these are brought to us by the science. The early 20th century was the period of war. 
Obviously, on the top left, we see the soldier in gas mask and the sky filled with plain fire. On the top right was Moscow, Russia. It is the red square of communists together with two enormous classical figures on the left and the right side. However, the sculpture were broken. On the left was suit who wore a cross around his neck, suggesting the faultlessness of Christianity like the Asian pagan religion. On the right side, broken sculpture with no head had a symbol of Nazis, refer to the old structure that fading away which was the West portrait West. of important figures in that period of time and in the past were included such as Lenin and Trotsky in the right side and David and John D. Rockefeller on the left side, which Rivella placed him with anger under the microorganism. We cannot deny that the chaos, advancement in technology, and evil it will left be the question to the audience of what will technology bring us to more equal society, educated world, or create more gap in society. Therefore, I believe that Rivella paints this mural in hope to remind people to make choice wisely, as the title was marked Man Controller of the Universe. The next famous mural was called Dream of Sunday in Aneda. It Center is a Park. picture of the quintessential symbol of Mexican popular culture. Rivera narrated the theme of Mexican history in this picture and put in many historical figures and symbolic elements. The mural combined Rivera's childhood experience and the historical event that took place in the Mexico City in Aneda Park. He represents himself as a child in the center holding hand with Godalu Posada creation, who was the skeletal figure. His wife Frida Kahlo was shown as his protector, holding the yin-yang symbol, which is a fundamental duality in humanity. The yin represents female, and the yang represents male. It is believed that the Chinese symbol are a metaphor of the relationship between Rivera and Kahlo, a complex relationship between these two political comrades. Rivera began as Carlo mentor, then they married and separate and got back together. Rivera has no faith in God. The mural depicts a man holding the sign which read, God doesn't exist. This work caused a funeral, but he refused to remove the inscription. The painting wasn't shown for nine years until he agreed to remove the inscription. And that's all for this Mexican famous artist, Diego Rivera. Thank you for watching.